welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. Ooh. This week we're drinking Drew Meadas, um and espressos. Yes. Fun. The one and only. And our white girl cups are here too. Mine's off camera our again. Stanley cups. All right. I just felt like it was crowding it because mine, <laughs> since mine is, is look fucking monochromatic black. I yeah. feel like it sticks out like a sore thumb. And it covers our squishies. I know. That's why I was trying not to cover the, the goods. <laughs> Stupid. Um, the audience. Yeah. <laughs> this is our audience. <laughs> no, that's the audience. <laughs> This is our he needs to practice more. <laughs> no, I think he should practice more. Yeah. This is Donovan lore. <laughs> <laughs> I know we, uh, we were dying laughing at the, the joke that one of you made when they're like, I want to meet everyone from the off wall of cinematic <laughs> universe. <laughs> Dude, we're going to have guests soon. I promise. We um, are. We're working on it. We've been, it's our fault. We've been slacking on coordinating, um, times to get the other our faves morgan our fave and justin morgan. we'll definitely have them on the pod too eventually yeah for sure also morgan and justin have been literally telling us like when can we bring you guys the new mics and we're like we're all, hee hee i'm in new york being a fucking idiot that's what i'm saying like literally like, morgan I'm, was telling me i feel so bad i'm all why <laughs> she doesn't feel don't feel bad. <laughs> i feel bad it's literally our fault we were in vegas and then home for two days and then we went to new york and then we were home and then i left again for valentine's day and oh I just got home i didn't jet setting i was home for valentine's day <laughs> single jet setting <laughs> jet setting girls I, I was like i'm by coastal at this point <laughs> no shit every time i see my friends in new york they're like you should just get a place over here. I'm like, girl, are you out of your fucking mind? Ew, I'm, uh, I'm barely in the home I have don't now. Don't do it. I lived there. It's awful. <laughs> I'm barely in the home I have now. You think I'm going to have two homes I'm not in? No fucking not way. In, not a chance. No way, bitch. No. Like, well, and every time we go to New York, I cry every time I have to go. Like, I'm being, <laughs> like, I'm being fucking tortured. There's no reason Literally, for that. Yeah. It's called Chirama. Mm -hmm. But um, no, this last time I went, it was so fun. It was a blast. A blasty blast. When we went uh, this past time, um, we went with NARS. Girl. NARS Cosmetics. And NARS is the best. And I am not sponsored to say that at all, but me and Days have loved NARS for so long. For Adam, years, too. Yeah. Uh, me and Adam have been using NARS. And Ever all heard of the Radiant Creamy Concealer? 10 years, bitch. Also, uh, their foundation, like, it's like the, the re light reflecting the light one. Reflecting the newest one. one that they came out with. That shit's nuts. So bomb. So, and I've been using their skincare a lot recently oh, yeah. and she pops off. Fun. She, she pops off. So anyways, we've been barely fucking home. Yeah. I told her, I feel like a bee, like I need to return to the hive to Recharge, like charge, yeah. to like become a normal person again. Me and too. then I can leave again. So I feel that too. man, oh man. But anywho, I'm so glad you guys liked our last episode I know. about giving advice. I literally listened to them when they dropped too, even as if I wasn't there. <laughs> That's me editing going. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Damn. You know what's funny? I thought of another inside joke and I was like, I have to remember to bring that up on the podcast. And I fucking forgot. I know. I'll think of it again. I always think of bits and then I'm like, oh, I got to write that down. And then I don't. Cause I'm like, I'll remember. I never do. And you okay. guys have been doing how much a lot lately it hits every time i know it hits every single time doesn't matter when it's gonna be funny every it doesn't single matter time. i said what if i just went back there and started acting like i work here yeah <laughs> i know so and so i'm allowed to do don't what worry I, want. I know that they said i could do this you're gonna get mad at me and then, I'm all, and then you're talking for so long they just walk away from you you just gaslight them. yeah you're gonna get mad at me don't walk away from me you're gonna get mad at me no one's even there anymore yeah <laughs> their backs are turned yeah like, <laughs> i'm just talking to myself <laughs> Uh, but you guys tag us. If you use the bits, please tag us. We love seeing them. Dude, I see though, them all the time. You saying, no, that's the audience with those. Fishes. <laughs> that shit made me laugh so hard. That was so funny. Dude, it's so good. Yeah. It hits every time. Uh, you guys are big fans of the Don man too. We'll get him on here. eventually. Don't worry. Donnie will make an appearance eventually. I asked him if he would come on and he said, no, I'm all, well, I'm already penciling he's, you in. He's also such a liar. Like, he loves the attention. <laughs> like, he's such a fucking liar. He's like, what is it? Cancer, sun. Gemini, Gemini moon. moon. Aries rising, bitch. 
Does that not sound like doesn't the most that, unhinged person? Doesn't that sound like someone that would set up an audience to do a stand-up routine <laughs> and then not take any criticism about if whether or not it was bad? You're all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I said, like, he was unwavered. Like, it, that's why it's funny, because mm-hmm. he didn't care. He was like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Dude, I know. I went, I was, I hung out with him yesterday mm-hmm. and he was like, you didn't bring a Lego set? Well, you didn't, I told you I was on my way and you didn't tell me to bring <laughs> one. He's like, you know, we build Legos every weekend. I'm like, we haven't done that in months, but okay. Yeah. And I told him, no, let's play The Last of Us. I want to feel close to my husband. Pedro I watched Pascal. it. I watched it. Oh, finally. you're caught up. No I'm spoilers. all caught up. We're obsessed. I'm all kind of the only reason I don't watch new shit is because clearly we've established I'm never fucking home Well, and you're mentally ill. So that too. So I need to know how it ends. So I always watch things that I know how they end. Yeah. Even then, like, like when I watch, like if I'm like uh hyper fixating on something like the office, yeah. I don't watch the first like three seasons oh, or two okay. or two seasons. Cause I don't like when Pam's not with Jim and yeah. I don't, I don't like those seasons. <laughs> so I literally don't watch them. Have you seen that girl on TikTok where she talks about how she rewatches shows and she writes down which episodes and seasons to skip? I just remember. But no, but she did that. She did one for New Girl. And yeah. She did one for, and I thought it was. I, which I ones I did she you. skip? I can't. I don't remember. I've never watched that show all the I'm way curious. I, the last season, <laughs> which sucks because they could have teed that up so well, but I know why they had to rush the ending yeah. of the show, which sucks, but. Um, I love that show. That show hits every time. The first couple, the first uh, new girl is one of those shows that I can watch the first couple seasons and not care. But the ending is the end seasons are not very yeah. good. Um, or just the last one I'll say. But anyways, what I was going to say was I'm never home. So I like, and I'm mentally ill. So I like to watch the same shit. Mm. And then literally the other day when we were home, we were like, what do we watch? And we always put on something we've seen a bajillion times yeah. and then we eat and then we, uh, look at our phones. Me and Billy do that all the time. And then you have your enrichment time. <laughs> That's my enrichment time and mind closure. <laughs> no, my enrichment time is playing video games. Yeah. But anyways, so then- Gamer um, girl. Gamer. But then I told Billy, I was like, what about The Last of Us? And he goes, yeah, let's do it. And I go, mm, should we start that now? That's what we always say. And then he goes, we're never going to watch it if we don't start it now. I was like, yeah, you they right. They come out every Sunday at 6 p.m., Pacific Standard Time. So, dude, I can't wait to see the new episode. But, anyways, my point being, I watched all the episodes. I'm all cut up. What a great show. Not that I doubted it even for a second, but it's so good and fucking sad mm. and scary. Dude, I was just playing the video game. I was like, I don't think I want to play this video game anymore. It's terrifying. Like, literally, Billy doesn't like that video game because he's like, it's too much. Like, I don't like how scary it is. So me and Donnie were playing yesterday and he was getting mad at me. I'm like, okay, because our rule we've told you is my dad made up. If you die, it's the other person's turn. Yeah. Up. Hand it over. And when we were playing, everyone knows I get three tries because I'm not (laughs) not good at games like this. When it's Donovan next, I'm like, let me just go one more time. Yeah. Such little brother That's shit. That's little brother shit. But <laughs> one more time. One yeah, more time. But the and then I die immediately. I'm like, one more that doesn't count. Getting mad. Like you jump off and you die. <laughs> I slip. But you didn't tell me that, co- that control. He's getting mad at me. The game is so fun. Or not the game. The show is so good. Yeah. It's it's but I watched like literally four episodes in a row and then it was late so we went to sleep Mm -hmm. and then i dreamt about nothing but zombies and i was like i can't watch that many at one time anymore it's fucking terrifying and then we watched the final episode so now he's just so bomb in that show i just have the biggest crush on him here's an update (laughs) on my crush on travis kelsey i got the ick he wears skinny jeans you guys no here are my two eggs well yeah that's one of them that's one of them no but the first one is do you know what his instagram handle is I, if I remember, correctly. I can't believe no one brought this up to me, even though I looked at it a hundred times and it didn't give me the ick. I looked at it enough to be like, and I never followed him. Do you know what it is? I don't remember, but what do you think a 33 year old man's Instagram handle should be? His first and last name. And like, maybe you put your, your Jersey number in there. No, <laughs> <laughs> you have enough pull first and last name. Okay. It's not that I know it's like something like it's something it's not this, but it's something cringe like T money or like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like something cringe like that. Tea fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Tea dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's Killa. Oh, yeah. Killa Trav. That's what it is. Worse, to be honest. See what I mean? Something like, that's why I said. Morgan like, was saying that because obviously their podcast is popping off right now. So yeah, Morgan's been texting about it and I was telling her he's the just. The Kelsey brothers. He's just so hot. Like I can't stand it. What's the name of their podcast? You New mean? Heights. Oh, because okay. I think they're where they're from in Ohio. 
or wherever the fuck they're from. I think it's called New Heights. Oh, that's cool. And, and then they're at New Heights. Cute. And um, it's cute. They had both of their I love quarterbacks double on entendre. separately, like on separate episodes. Oh, I love that. It's really cute. Double entendre. I love that. And so, no, the idea of the podcast and the vibes on it is so good. And like, yeah, it's genius because they're, and they're both so likable in different ways. Yeah. But she was saying, she's like, Publicly. she was like, I get more like Jason vibes from me. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, that's rude, but okay. And he's older. No, I know. Yeah. But I mean, if you watch them, that's literally how we are. Yeah. And yeah. I think you're a lot smarter than Travis Kelsey is. I'm though. smarter than most men. So. But well, I just mean like if we're going clip off- that and then be like, see, she doesn't <laughs> fuck you, bitch. <laughs> Anyways, he's still hot to me, but and then he wears skinny jeans and I didn't like that. In this economy, I don't know. Kill a Travis in this jeans? year. Why are you wearing skinny jeans? Jeans. That's right. Everyone's sending me the clips of him at the parade. That didn't give me the, the clip of him singing. Or- the way they're sending, they're trying to give you eggs. Yeah. That's they so were funny. like, no girl, it was like Moko's on his lip and he was like going like this at the, at the mm-hmm. end of the game. I'm yeah. all, that didn't give me the ick. Um, the clips of him at the parade, no ick. And even the clip of him on the tonight show, um, his favorite song is, is a fight for your right to party. I don't know the name of the song, but by the BC. Oh Boys, yeah. Yeah. Um, he performed. I think the song is called party. It's something like that. Or yeah. I don't remember what it's called. That's what I'm saying. I don't know Everyone's the name. Everyone's going to be song. like, you're so wrong. You're so stupid, stupid women. What are you, a big Beastie Boys fan? <laughs> I'm all, I actually really like the Beastie Boys and I don't know the name of the I song. I know. Well, I'm just saying, like, no, what I do know. they have, a stand club or something? But anyways, he performed that song on The Tonight Show and everyone's like, did this give you the egg? Come on. No, he looked bomb while he was doing For it. For what? Because he was saying that's his hype song. I know, but why would they make him perform it? It's not a talent he's show. A, a handsome white man who won, just won the Super it's Bowl. It's not on America's Got Talent. And I'm like, no, I, I, I I'd be look pissed. Great. I'd be fucking pissed if they wanted me to perform. I'm like, no, just ask me the fucking question. He loves attention. He's a Libra. Yeah, I know. And bitch. I think it's so bizarre because I've grown up around a Libra man um, and he doesn't act like that at all. You have to know the rest of the big three, huh? Yeah, dude. He's well, got Leo in there somewhere. Uh, yeah, for sure. I Leo, would say even um, Aries. Or Aries. I was yeah. going to say Aries. Aries are, it's so like unhinged. Mm-hmm. Um, the Libra in him is why people like him. Like he's, he's so like uh, grounded in, in who he is. Yeah. And that's why people gravitate towards him because that's the Libra. Libras are so likable, like mm-hmm. um, surface level. They're so <laughs> likable. Whether or not they suck ass, it depends <laughs> on the other two. But yeah. um, like off top, they're very charming. They're very sweet. They're very funny. Like they're very easy to get along with in the beginning. He's just so bomb. But so like, like Billy, Billy is a Libra. So that works really well for me because I'm so like overanalyzing and yeah. he's super like, it's fine. About What's everything. his moon? Billy's he's a Taurus moon. Oh, okay. That's know. why he's so like, those work so great together. When I told, uh, when I did, uh, the, uh, astrology podcast with someone, uh, and I told her his big three. She was like, what a beautiful Venus filled chart. <laughs> and then she said our charts were so perfectly aligned um, because there, there's a lot of balance there. Yeah. So his Taurus moon is why he's so like, um, I love Tauruses too. I get along with Tauruses so well. Um, so grounded, so sweet, mm-hmm. you know, so. That Libra, as I said, he, he's got to be an Aries. He, he's got to have Aries or Leo in that chart. For sure yeah. he does. For sure he does. Because he's so, like, showy. And that is not how Billy is at all. No, I know. At all. Like, he hates attention. <laughs> <laughs> he hates public attention. Yeah. Like, and I'm not saying, like, when you guys want to say hi or take pictures. I mean, like, him performing. That's his idea of a nightmare. Yeah. He once told me he thought acting was the most embarrassing job <laughs> in the world. <laughs> like, Even, like, we're talking about. Going like, to, for him. Yeah. For him. We're talking about going to VidCon. Yeah. And he was telling me, I hope they don't pick me to do anything. Because <laughs> he's like, the thought of going on a stage is like. He's like, it makes me want to like scream. Yeah, he's like, I'm just going to scream and run away. Like, he told me, he's like, I'm so excited. But like, God, I was thinking, like, God, I hope they don't pick me to do anything. <laughs> he's so funny. Because he's just like, that's just not his vibes. That's why. That's why when people are like, I like hypercritical of my relationship because they, they're single and bitter. They're like, I don't know how the fuck he puts it. He doesn't want to be the star like at all. Like he's, he's told me for years, I'm super I, okay with. That's such a good point because yeah. you can't, you can't both want to be no, the star. No, you can't. Coming like, from someone who was, who has <laughs> been with someone and we both were. I'm not even, wasn't even fighting to be the star. No, not just, even. But it, but, but it was star 
power or like the the ability to become a star. Yeah. No, but I'm saying different. also too that like you don't care if he gets his star moment. No, yeah, not but at I'm all. I'm saying like she couldn't let me be a star. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he doesn't care. And I don't care if he becomes a star in any capacity because I'm a star too. Yeah. So I don't care because mm-hmm. I'm confident in my own right. That's crazy. That's um, good. But there can't be. Raised- they're just writing this down. Write this yeah, down. Write this just, down. There can't be two of you that are fighting for the spotlight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he is super okay. He's told me this for years. Like, he's okay with being famous by proxy. Like he's famous because he's with me. He don't give a shit about that. You know what? I we were talking about <laughs> like, Kylie Jenner, right? Yeah. You're like, I don't want to be your sister. I want to be your friend. <laughs> no shit. Like when people are like, oh, like you want to, like oh, you want to be a. Uh, what was it? We, what were we talking about? Like oh, like. You could be her boyfriend or something. I forget what we were talking about. It was some question we got on here. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, no, would you rather be her sister, her friend or her or something like that? Or like her, her partner. Yeah. And I was like, I'm trying to be her fucking friend, like her ride or die. Yeah. Because then you're famous by proxy, but you don't have the spotlight she has, which is hyper, hyper focus and critical. critical. yeah. Yeah. But then you're still famous. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, it's like a perfect situation. Yeah. So before this happened for me, I would say like, I was going to start a business, like the movie Hitch starring Will Smith uh, and Kevin, Kevin James. James and Eva, Eva Mendes. Mendes. <laughs> we just list the, the whole principal cast. Whole. <laughs> and <laughs> stars in New yeah. York City, New York. Yeah. And uh, you know how he's like, He's behind the scenes, like orchestrating moments where they can talk to men that they wouldn't otherwise look at. Yeah. Um, but he's like, a cons- he calls himself a consultant. Yeah. Cause I is. was telling yeah. Dason forever. I was going to do that business, but for famous people, but I was going to be their real friend. Yeah. Like rooted in the real world. Um, I've heard that a lot of celebrity tequilas have a lot of sugar in them. And then that's what makes you hungover and hurts your tummy. It is. It is. That's why real tequila doesn't hurt your stomach or make you hungover. Like when you go to Mexico and you have like actual tequila, like it doesn't hurt you Mm. and you can drink it without mixing it in anything. Like you're supposed to be able to drink it straight and with no, with no chaser. I want to drink. I see those TikToks of those like Paloma drinks that they make in those little, like not like they're like pottery type like cups. Oh yeah. 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 Those things like nuts. I I love a Paloma. Mm. Palomas are fucking fire. You know why? Cause sometimes they put squirt in there. (laughs) Squirt. I just love a fun drink. Yeah. A silly fruity drink. Give it I to know. me. I know. I told you I went to dinner with my friend last night and I couldn't sleep till like 2 a.m. And I told her I realized it's because I had two espresso martinis. So I had the zoomies. <laughs> I've tried. Okay, listen, I tried so hard to do espresso martinis. I just, I fucking hate gin and I hate vodka too. That's how you make martinis. Oh, well, I asked him to make it with tequila. That's why it tastes good. Oh shit. Well then I got to try it. I've tr- I've tried the vodka. The gin is ass and no. I I will not. No, they always ask me for if I want it with vodka and I always I always just say yes even though I want tequila cuz I'm too embarrassed cuz then they're going to say which one and I'm be like don't do this to me. <laughs> just What is this an interview? <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I what? You just get mad immediately. What do I work here all of a sudden? Yeah. <laughs> what do I need you for? Why don't I just go back there and mix it myself? And they go which one? I go which one do you have? They go what spirit? Don't don't fuck with me. Yeah. You're just saying things to me. I get mad. <laughs> what do I need you for? I didn't know this was an interrogation. What am I, the bartender all of a sudden? Oh, I'm sorry. Do I see has mixologist stamped on my forehead? <laughs> like you just get mad. Like just pissed immediately. So they're, they're like, what drink do you want? Um, and I'm like, Billy, uh, tell him that I want. <laughs> Why is ordering at the bar the most embarrassing thing I could do? Dude, okay. <laughs> Like Billy, when we went to Vegas, speak on stage at VidCon. I would rather do that than order a drink at a bar. I can't even tell you how many times I've told Billy, "Can you ask him yeah. if he can bring me ketchup, hot sauce, and also a spoon?" <laughs> and and we'll, it's not because like, an extra fries, an extra fries. Yeah. Okay, sorry. All right, guys, we're gonna hop right into these advice questions. Yes. This one is anonymous. She said, "Have you dealt with racism in Eugene, Oregon? If so, how did you handle it?" Looking, having a tough time adjusting. Did when you visited me? Did you ever experience racism when you were there? Um, yes, but it was like subtle racism. Like it was shit. Like I felt like they were over pronouncing Spanish words to me. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not even Hispanic. So, okay. Yeah. Wrong bitch. But you're trying, but it's also, it's one racist and two wrong ethnicities. Yeah. They're like, gracias. (laughs) They're like, we have taquila. We have arroz con pollo. Like that. 
They didn't say that. <laughs> they didn't say that that's too advanced for them, but yeah. No, it's like along those lines. It's like, it's little shit like that, that I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? But, um, it wasn't even the right race. So no. <laughs> like, yeah. I got, I mean, I, my whole life I've been mistaken for being Latina. Um, and then I told you guys one time I got a pedicure, a white guy did my pedicure, which is <laughs> bizarre. And then he asked me halfway through, wouldn't stop talking to me. So I was like annoying. Yeah. And then like the last 10 minutes he had asked me, um, would you mind if I practice my Spanish on you? And then I said, why? Actually I would. Yeah. Why would I do that? And he goes, well, aren't you Mexican? And then I went, nope. <laughs> and then he was just staring at me. And then I was, I felt like I embarrassed him. So I overcompensated and I'm like, but I do know a lot of Spanish. So if you do <laughs> So I experienced stuff like that. I got followed around in stores a lot. I never experienced stuff like that before. I've been, ironically, I got, the first time I ever got followed around in a store, the first time, not the last time, but like was um, in Hawaii, but I was in the Alamoana mall. Everybody knows. Fun. And I was in the Sephora and I was literally buying one lipstick, mm -hmm. but because I didn't have a car and I was a freshman in college, like I took the fucking bus, but I went shopping, grocery shopping before that, but I learned the hard way to bring a backpack so I don't have to carry the shit. So I brought a big backpack and I had it on my back and I put all the heavy shit inside yeah. there. And then I was carrying it. And I was fucking sweaty and I probably looked insane, but I was walking around the store with a bag and a backpack and this fucking white lady followed me everywhere. Yeah. Like, and I, and then I, I got so annoyed. I didn't even realize like at the time that she was racially profiling me, but I, at the, I literally turned around and I go, I don't need help if that's why you're following me. Cause like I told her, I kept saying hi to her and she just was constantly watching me. Yeah. And then she goes, Oh, I wasn't going to ask you need help. I was just watching you. And I was like, why? Cause I was so like caught off guard. I don't yeah. understand. And then she fucked off after that. But I was like, I'm buying one lipstick. Like, and I was, my backpack was so fucking full. Hikers backpack. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when he called Donovan's backpack a turtle shell? <laughs> Because I wish everyone could watch the way this man came to New York with us in December. <laughs> it was embarrassing. The way he'll, he doesn't want to carry anything so badly that he'll put <laughs> everything known to man inside a backpack. It really looks like the Grinch stole Christmas on his fucking back. And then his backpack's hard as shit. That's why I said a turtle shell. <laughs> fucking turtle shell. <laughs> stupid i thought of that yesterday and i was literally laughing by myself <laughs> and i was like i can't wait to see her until i that again i was gonna say um i also had this russian professor he i took like earthquakes and volcanoes because i used to take the easy science classes to graduate yeah and i was like in the height of my depression in senior year so i missed a lot of class because i like couldn't get out of bed mm -hmm. and so but i had emailed him and asked him if i could turn in a bunch of stuff late and he went yeah and then when i went to his office the next day mm -hmm. it was like in like his russian accent was like you americans think you could just do whatever you you want and then i was like hey, girl why did you tell me i could oh, then? you literally told me okay and then so that was racist and then um trying to think of other times um i mean yeah eugene is is it was literally a sundown town like mm -hmm. that's not funny but like it literally is so historically like one of the most famous ku klux klan like um groups was started there like yeah. their right, buildings named after founding like kkk members so like um, I would just look for, I don't know, I'm assuming you're a person of color because you said racism, but if I were you, I would look for different clubs and organizations on campus to see people who look like you, yeah. who experience the same things that you experience. That's the irony, isn't it? Because I feel like when you were working at, in the introduction, like the orientation program, yeah, yeah, I felt like they went out of their way to make sure that you felt like you were in a community where you felt safe yeah. and welcome um and maybe that's just overcompensating for like the history of the town i don't know but um yeah for me it was real casual when i went there um still racism just like it was very like okay and it's very much like white people who are like i'm not racist i'm not racist i'm not racist yeah. well, then why are you looking at me i'm not like these other people yeah i'm not like them and it's we like hiked, um, i wouldn't feel the need to say that if i truly wasn't like <laughs> like no, you know what i mean yeah. so I mean, remember when we hiked, I think it was Spencer's view. I always mix up Spencer's and Skinner's. I don't know. It's one of those, but, um, remember we went on a hike and then oh everyone God, yeah. walked around us was like, what are they doing here? That's yeah. my phone. Or they were running fast ahead of us. Oh, I was like, don't bitch, do I'm, that. bitch, I'm dying. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> I'm like, this is why I don't like fucking hiking. I literally told my mom, I'm like, I hate hiking. Me too. I hate it. Even in, I'm not going to go in Hawaii. You can't make me. I'll probably end up going. And that's the part that pisses me. I'm not doing Cocoa Head. You can't make me. Okay. <laughs> uh, the, let me tell you something. 
<laughs> if you go to Hawaii, if you go to Oahu and they're like, what are some good hiking spots? And someone tells you Coco Hand, that person wants you to fucking die. Die. Like they, they they're are praying on your downfall. They're, they're wishing nothing but the worst for you. <laughs> like truly they, they don't like you. Take it as a What's personal attack. What's the easy one? The, the pillbox? Even, that one's not that even- one's hard too. That one's not even fucking easy. Everyone's like, well, pillbox is easy. I'm like, just because there's a million people on it doesn't mean it's easy because yeah. it's not. And I said, oh, it's easy. That's why I almost, first of all, died on it once. And second <laughs> that's of all- That's not from the hike. That's from you being a fucking feel. But I'm cool. saying, no, that's from the hike though. I blame the fucking hike because, and also I blame the white people behind me rushing me. <laughs> So that's one. And then two, my calves are burning. I've only ever made it to the first pillbox. <laughs> Me too. So like, it is hard. <laughs> and then I think to myself, why am I doing physical activity like this when I could be laying on the I'm beach? Like a I'm not doing that anymore. Why am I doing that? I'm going to be 30. My mom can't make me go on a hike. <laughs> she can't make me. Every hike. time we go to Hawaii, my dad's like, I'm going to get in at least one hike. Yeah. I'm all by yourself yeah. to you. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not going. I won't be there. The way that they try to make me do Cocoa Head before sunrise, you're out of your mind, bitch. I'm like, that's the colonizer in here. Mm -hmm. Get it out. Exercise it out. I'm not doing that. We're better than that. We're bigger than this. I literally was telling me like, what's an easy hike? Mm, Diamond Head's easy, but it's not even a hike. It's just like a street and you walk up it. And even then you're still tired by the the top. So (laughs) what constitutes easy is my thing. It's like, this is physical activity and on vacation. Nothing no thanks. about that is easy. Hey, no thanks. Hey, Nothing I, about that I is won't easy. be there. No, thank you. Diamond Head's super easy. But oh, like um, what's the one we did to the waterfall with the stinky fruit? <laughs> <laughs> what's that's, the one? Manoa uh, Falls. Manoa Falls. Yeah. That one was easy. That one's hella easy, but you'll get bit up, yeah. bitch. And like it smells so bad. It's the fruits, no, like the stinky trees. Like I'm telling you guys, if you have a bad gag reflex like me, I used to think it was just in the morning. It's at all times. If you have a bad gag reflex, it's, I was like, like listen, dying. I've done every hike you can think of on that fucking island. Like I've done. <gasps> Speaking of Hawaii, my favorite show, Doogie Kamei Aloha is coming back. Okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cast me on that show if you're real. Dude, come on. You have Alex Iona on there. Yeah. Get us on there, please. I'll do anything. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I've done Cocoa Head. I've done the Kailua pillboxes. I've done the West Side pillboxes. Have any of you bitches done that one? That one, I genuinely almost died on that one. Um, I've done Mount Oili Falls. I've done Manoa Falls. I've done all the falls. I've done Stairway to Fucking Heaven, bitch. You know what's so funny is that when I lived in Oregon, everyone asked me if I would go hiking all the time, and I was like, no, I've never been hiking there. <laughs> and, and that's why Drew's like, I did this one. I did this one. Not me. All my friends, my, my, my best friends, like they weren't all white, but the majority of them like loved the ones that were yeah. loved to hike. Why? I don't fucking know, but I did stairway to heaven one time and that's all I needed. And that hike is illegal first mm-hmm. of all, but it's also such a white person hike because that one is very dangerous. Mm-hmm. And I did it because they said the views would be crazy. And I was like, for the story, I'm going to do it. Right. So I did it. And it's, they are not kidding. It's only stairs. At one point you're climbing like straight up, like in a straight fucking line. It's terrifying at night. I did it when it was fucking raining before the sun rose, got to the top. Sun wasn't even out. And I was like, nice. this is what I get for listening to white nice. people. This is what happens when I listen to them. And then it took me a million years to get down. It That's why I don't go. I'm not going. It took me forever. You going won't- down Cocoa Head takes me forever too. I'll go. Yeah, I'll go. No, you won't. You won't see me there. Okay. This next one's from Layla. She said, I, we got this one a lot too. She needs advice on how to love myself more. I know it's a pretty basic question, but it's something I'm really struggling with a lot. I mean, it, it, it can manifest in many different ways. I think one of the biggest things you can do is doing things that bring you joy yeah, that don't necessarily that. yield a result. Like, yeah. So not working, right? Not going to the gym. Unless that does bring you joy, that's fine. But, you know, some those things are like tangible results you get out of it. But doing things like if you can afford it, like any sort of self-care, that goes beyond like skincare or like a mask or a bath, which those are all forms of self-care. But like getting your nails done or like taking yourself out to lunch or like buying your favorite drink, like a fun drink. Or getting your eyelashes done, like yeah, stuff would, like that. I would just suggest you do more things that you like to do. Like make a list of like five things you like to do that bring you joy that don't 
like aren't measurable in any yeah, way. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't change it. Do you know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it's still, you sh- it's, I would look for ways to spend time by yourself. I cannot emphasize that enough. Yeah. Living by myself has made me fall in love with myself so much more. Yeah. Cause I have to deal with myself. Like I can't be like, what's my mom doing and going to sit with my mom? Like, yeah. No, it's like just me and the cats. I'm like, now what? Looking at them. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, well I should do something that I like to do. So, so like whether it's reading or I'm like, on Pinterest looking up ways to decorate my house or yeah. Like, like the only outcome is it makes you happy. Yeah. Like it, that's the only outcome. And I've been working on that recently because remember I told y'all like, I don't have any fucking hobbies. Like that's what I told my therapist. I was mm-hmm. like, I realized because everything I do has to yield the result. Your hobbies are biscuits and then squid. <laughs> Well, video games is the only thing that I do that doesn't yield a result. And I've lots of people have asked me to stream, which like in theory I would like to do. But I told Dason, like another reason why I don't want to stream is because that's me monetizing one more thing Yeah, that it's just not mine. Like it's, it becomes everybody's. So I was like, if I, I think if we did stream, it would be fun to do it together or like with our little brother mm-hmm. and we would do games that aren't or like we could do the last of us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it wouldn't be a game you truly love to do. And you're like, yeah. You're taking very seriously. Like we're like dicking around. Yeah. You know it's I mean? like, it's like the only thing I do that doesn't yield a result. Like it's literally just cause it makes me yeah, happy. Like that's it's such fun. A good point. So like, I, that's what I think starting loving yourself, you know, starts with is now that the sun's coming back, at least in California, like mm-hmm. lizard time. I'm going to be in my lizard sister's time. backyard every, that's true. Yeah. Every, whatever. I having, bought the chairs. Yeah. <laughs> So they're ready. They're still in the box, but <laughs> I bought them. But me and Squid are going to have lizard time in the backyard. Like, yeah, he loves I'm lizard time. I'm trying to think of ways. I'm so excited that it's going into spring slash summer because um, the I sun love makes the sun. me so happy. So and I would just make a list of things you could do by yourself that like you, you said, love yeah you love you'll know results but they make you feel really good yeah even if you go to like barnes and noble and you can't buy anything just going and looking at things and making a list of things you want to buy when you can get like, your silly little drink yeah and just go and like read in you can read in barnes those and noble. are my favorite tiktoks to watch watch yeah. me spend a day by myself i could watch 100 of those yeah like it's self-love comes in many different forms. It's just like, it's very different for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, for those, you guys already know, but I had Leo Skeppy on the show. Right. And he said something that was very profound. Like he was saying, you need to start treating yourself as if you are worth something like you do matter. He's the way you treat other people. It sounds so simple, but like you look at yourself in the mirror and you're, if you start treating yourself the, like you are worth something, you'll in, inevitably you'll fall into the practice of loving yourself, even if it takes a while. Yeah. And your words are also very powerful yeah. too. Like I think a, a lot of times people think like, Oh, like when you're self deprecating your like for humor reasons, it's funny to an extent. Um, but your brain doesn't forget things like that. Mm. So if you make fun of what you look like all the time or like make fun of things like, you know, your intellect or like your taste or whatever, Um, your brain doesn't forget things like that. So you have to start talking to yourself as if you're talking to someone that you really love. Right. Yeah. My therapist always says like, especially when I'm in moments of like panic, she's like, Mm -hmm. what would you tell someone if they were you? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh, that, you know, cause a lot of what we say to ourselves, that's what creates anxiety. Yeah. Um, at least mine is fueled by, um, irrational thoughts. Same. Well, that's everyone's anxiety. I'm sorry. Mine's filled by irrational thoughts, which is predicated on the understanding that something terrible is going to yeah, happen. And mine and, is like, well, not anymore, but it used to be like, I'm ugly and no one likes me and everyone thinks I'm irritating and annoying. Yeah. Um, and then I would believe that and be like, that's why I don't have friends when like, yeah. really I don't have friends because I don't fucking talk to anyone. I just, <laughs> I just hang out by myself all the time and, yeah. I, and I don't make the effort. When you really unpack it. Yeah. Like, and you look at it for what it really is. It's so. not because of you. It's, it is, but it's not for what you think. Yeah. It's because you're you're holding yourself back. Yeah, exactly. Because of the fear of rejection, which is natural. Like it happens yeah, to everyone. Everyone has it. Yeah. Um, they're so corny, but like in theory, but affirmations are big. Like, I can't emphasize those enough. And like looking at yourself in the mirror and saying it can feel f- so fucking silly. You know what I did that you suggested to me last year hmm. in the height of my breakup era? Yeah. Um, my thank you next era. Well, well, actually, I'm in that now, but uh, breakup era um, was 
Alicia McCarvel, she did this thing where she had like a little notepad. It mm-hmm. kind of looked like the one from Blue's Clues. Yeah. And every day she wrote down something in there, like at the end of the day. Yeah. That she loved about herself or something she was really proud of herself or excited for her that she yeah. did. And some day, and so I did it probably for like three months. And yeah. so and I looked at it when I was moving and I was like, I'm gonna throw it away because I'm so cringy and like well not cringy, but I'm like, I'm not that person anymore. And I feel yeah. I'm so glad I outgrew that. Yeah. But um even if I had days where like I fucking cried all day and like did nothing but bitch and moan, I remember I'm so glad I woke up today and I and I put pants on. Yeah. And then the next day would be like, I'm so glad today I laid in the sun for two hours because I knew I needed it. And I made that's sense. true. That so, is I did get that from her. Little things. Even if you don't have a real notepad, like you could put it in your notes. In app. your notes app, yeah. Like you write down something that you love about yourself. Mm-hmm. I love that, how that funny has I nothing am. Yeah. to do with looks. Yeah. That's what she did. Yeah. Something that you love about yourself, you're proud of yourself, or something that you felt really good about that you did or caused that had nothing to do with looks. Yeah. And that's because that's where self love starts. It has to be internal. Like yeah. before you can start to love what you look like, you have to love who you are as a like, person. Yeah. As a person and be secure in who you are. So mm-hmm. I got that from Alicia McCarville. And it works. It's for it's real. A game changer, bro. Yeah. Uh, Journaling is a big part of that too, but just do things that bring you joy. Like, mm-hmm. like, and they don't have to be extravagant. They don't have to be monetary. Like it could literally be like making coffee at home. Right. I love to make my coffee at home, take my silly little time or do your routine. Like sometimes my like shower routine is like my favorite thing to do. Cause I, I just take my time and I listen to yeah. music and it's like something that's really fun for me. Cause it, it it's my enrichment. time. Yeah. That's my enrichment time in my <laughs> enclosure. enclosure. So like leaving the room is a big one. Like sometimes I'll lay in my room all day and Billy's like, he can tell that I'm not feeling good. And he'll be like, let's move out of the room. Like, and then he opens the window so I can see the sun and it gets so dark in <laughs> like my room. A little bat. Yeah. It's like a cave in my room. So, but anyways, that's what I would do. Start internal and then work your way out. Right. And then use, say affirmations, say, I still say affirmations every day. Right. Whether at the beginning of the day or at the end. Right. And also think about things that you're grateful for. Those are really, yeah, that's really Bradman big too. Yeah, said that. He thinks yeah. of all the things, uh, uh, he called it a great a gratitude blanket. Yeah, like I wrap of, myself in a gratitude blanket. I think of all the things I'm grateful for in my life. So, and even if like you want to do arts and crafts, because that really stimulates my brain. Days and loves doing You arts can and crafts. go to like, because Michael's is so goddamn expensive. <laughs> you can go to fucking Walmart and buy like polymer clay. Like I saw this girl yeah. make like candlestick holders and I, I saved it. So I was like, new enrichment time. <laughs> and you can get clay from like, that from Walmart. I think you can get it there. Even like you can get like cheap shit at like Dollar Tree. Like just looking yeah. for little ways to leave your house to do stuff like that. If you can, if not, girl, try the journal, the the everyday things. The something. notepad, yeah, the notes. You'll right. see something that you love about yourself that has nothing to do with looks. And I promise it will. It doesn't feel like anything in the beginning, but it will alter your reality in like a couple months. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah. You'll see that it, with time it will come. This next one's from Bella. Mm -hmm. She said, what are your non-negotiables for you in relationships? Jeez Louise, man. Should we, do you think she means all types of relationships or should we just do romantic? Just romantic probably is what she means because we're on two different ends of the spectrum. Let's pick three. Okay. Morals is one. Yeah. Easily. Um, I mean, like, how deep are we going? Like, are we being silly or are we being, like, for realsies? We'll do three real ones and three sillies. Okay, so, like... We'll do sillies last. Yeah. Um, so yours is morals, like, beliefs. like Morals, I beliefs, like, we got to be on the same direction. Mm-hmm. Sometimes someone will be like, when do you bring that up? Immediately. Yeah. Like, when you're texting, before you meet in fucking person. Who did you vote for in 2016? Yeah, literally. Yeah. Where were you on January 6th? Like, <laughs> literally, yeah. immediately. Anyone who's like, well, I'm financially conservative eh, yeah bye i right? think both sides are bad eh, bye bye right like oh i just feel like i don't see color and eh, bye yeah you know what i mean like no don't waste your fucking time you're never gonna change them yeah that's i a good can't one. say that enough okay morals is one um another serious one i've said this before but like how they treat you when you're upset whether you're mad sad and that is not necessarily because of them just in general yeah like so if a bad day. you're going through you have a bad day or something tragic happens or they piss you the fuck off yeah right like either one how they treat you when you're not happy because it's easy to be awesome when everything's awesome yeah you know what i mean like it's it's so easy to be like the best partner in the world when someone is like in a good mood 
Yeah. When you're in a bad mood, when you're sad, whether it's like a warranted sad or if you're just like not feeling well that mm-hmm. day mentally. Right. That's a big one. Um, And then I would say how they treat your family. Right. Like how they treat like your family's a big one for me because I'm super close to my family. But yeah. let's say you're not close to your family. Right. I would say whether or not they think about you when they're not with you. So like sending you funny things like, Hey, this made me think of you Uh or like picking up, like, like we talked about in the last one, getting you your favorite coffee because they're getting coffee or buying a snack just because they thought about you. I can't tell you how many times, like I've done that for Billy. I still do it to this day. I mean, I've even done it for Billy. Like, I know I've done it for days. I've done it for my brother. Mm -hmm. Like my mom, like I'll see something and I'll be like, one time Billy got in a car accident (laughs) and I felt bad. And I was like kind of broke at the time. And so I went to Walmart and bought one of his favorite protein bars. (laughs) And who didn't want you to do that? No, she was done for it. Oh, she yeah. was? Okay. Anyways, I bought him one of his favorite protein bars yeah. and I wrapped it in printer paper and I wrote, sorry about your car. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Shit like that. Like, like Billy's done that for my family. That's a big reason why I knew I loved him so much was because he was like, well, I just thought your brother would like this. So mm-hmm. I got it. Um, for my siblings, especially is like my parents, obviously, but when they think about your siblings too, it's like a big thing. So I would say, I was if gonna you, say, are those your three? Yeah. If you're close to your family, I would say how they treat your family, how they act around them, yeah. like that kind of shit. Um, and then also if you're not close to your family, whether or not they think about you at all, yeah. like when they're not with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine is definitely obviously morals. That's a huge one. Yeah. Which I feel like being in queer relationships, that shit. Yeah. Be. But sometimes they surprise you. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, the intersection is so complicated yeah. and nuanced. Like sometimes, you know, you never know. You would think, but you would think, yeah. yeah. So that's one. Um, oh, I had one and I forgot. I think just like, I want someone who's thoughtful. Well, what's a non negotiable? Oh, I was thinking, I want them to have their own friends. Yeah. Especially being gay, like lesbians, like they tend to all kind of intersect and have the same type of friends. And I think that gets really messy and convoluted. Mm-hmm. So that's a huge non-negotiable for me. Um, I want you to have your own friends. And then I, like basically having your own life outside of me. Yep. yep. Um, and I want them to have like, it doesn't have to be like, no, I want someone with an established career. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, like, or like, yeah, no. Established career, you know like I mean? passion, ambition, mm-hmm. passion. Um, that's not to say that people who are figuring it out aren't worth being in a relationship. I'm not at all. I'm just like, I'm going to be 30 this year. So like, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So, well, and you got to have something like, like even you, even if it's just an idea or like a dream Mm -hmm. or a goal, like you don't necessarily have to have it tangibly, but like you gotta have direction. Yeah. Purpose to some extent. Big. Like, and she can say that now because that's not how her last relationship was at all. No. So, so yeah. And it was, it was, uh, too, too like, um, flighty, uns- unstable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like very like, well, now I'm going to do this. Well, now I'm going to do this. Yeah. And it's like, you know and, what I mean? And like, sure. Like when you're in your early twenties. Yeah. Like, now that you. I'm going to be 30, I'm like, no. Yeah. We have to know what we're doing. Yeah. To some extent. Yeah. You gotta have something, something, yeah. something. Yeah. Okay. Then what's your, what are sillies? You gotta be funny. That's, I'm not even joking. That's a non-negotiable. Yeah, dog. Like not even silly. That's me. You gotta be funny and you gotta have rhythm. Like you gotta be able to dance to some extent. You don't have to be a fucking break dancer, but like. Yeah. Another one for me. Um, I don't want to date someone who's not out. Mm -hmm. Um, that's really important to me. To family and friends and everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you can only come out to certain family, that's fine. Like if you're out, I mean like to your immediate family, Yeah. if you still talk to them and you know what I mean? You're and friends I, with them. I would never force anyone to come out, but if they were like, Oh, I'm not out. I'd be like, I don't know if this is going to work. Like I really like you, but no, like, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to date someone. I don't want to date someone who's ashamed to be with me. Yeah. Because I'm a woman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's fair. Um, okay. So I said funny, you gotta be able to dance to mm-hmm. some extent. Um, I'm trying to think of another silly I guess hygiene, like you gotta, cause Ugh. I'm, I'm dating a man. So like, yeah. you need to be fucking clean. Yeah. Like you need to like, you need to not smell like shit. You need to brush your teeth. Like wash your ass. That's real baseline. Yeah. But like, that's not asking for much with men. It is. So that's why it's on my, <laughs> that's why it's on my sillies, non-negotiable because yeah. you would be shocked if you don't date men, you would be shocked, bitch. Uh. Like, oh my God. Like just like the base level of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, also another non-negotiable for me on the serious side, depending it's very nuanced, but for, if we're talking like base level men, men, how they treat their mom is yeah. like a big or sister, or any sort of how they treat women mom in general, especially yeah, with their mom, because the way that they treat their mom, the relationship they have with their mom is indicative of how they see women. Yeah. And so like, it's, you know, to an extent, obviously I'm not talking about if they had like a terrible mom or whatever. I'm talking about a man who is a, has a standard relationship with their mother. They see them a lot to mm -hmm. some extent, you know, you gotta be fucking nice to your mom. You would be in, you would be shocked about that too. How many grown men I've seen be disrespectful to their mother in their fucking twenties and they're living at home. Yeah. Can you fucking imagine? Yeah. What's like, going on? Like being rude to your mom and you live in her house. Yeah. That's insane. That's insane, bitch. Do you hear yourself right now? <laughs> you sound insane. Literally. Also, there's a huge uh, trope of, within the lesbian community of lesbians being friends with their exes. Oh. I don't know. Controversial opinion. I don't like it. <laughs> That's not controversial at all. I don't like it either. I don't like it. And it, I guess for it, what? For what? Um, you, the only exception I will make to that X rule is if you're like far advanced in life, you're in your like fucking forties. Yeah. You have children with someone, you get divorced. You both are like married to new people and you're like cool with each other. You're like co-parenting, yeah. co but like you're cool with each other yeah. because you have to be, because you have children together. That is the only exception I will make for that. Yeah. It's when there's different. no kids involved. I think it's different to be like cool with your ex. Like that's fine. That's yeah. your business. Like I am not like that. I, <laughs> <laughs> the Capricorn in me, in my moon, a lot of people think my son is in Capricorn. It's no. not. Don't ever offend She's me. a Sagittarius. Don't ever offend me like that. Ever She's again. right next door to a Capricorn. <laughs> I am though. just a few days away. Literally. But yeah. No. Um, I like, once you fuck me over or I don't like. Yeah. And also extent, the context of how you I'm broke not going to talk to you ever again. For what? That's what I think. Like when you're in your twenties and you broke up with someone yeah. and you don't, you don't have kids together, you don't share a life together. What the fuck do you need to be friends for? For what? So I, I don't want to be friends with any, yeah. it, I don't text would have to be very specific. Any yeah. man I dated and caught, I don't ever want to see you again. <laughs> like we're, I wish you the best. I, some, some of you, some of you, not really. Some of you, I wish you the worst, but like <laughs> other ones, like I don't ever need, we don't ever need to cross paths ever again. I don't yeah. need to ever see you again. I don't need to hear from you. Pretend you don't know me, bitch. Like yeah. pretend the men in black went right yeah. to that thing and it wiped your memory. Yeah. Like that's how I'm going to act. Literally. So I've never seen you. I've never, I don't know you. Hey, it bothers, yeah. it bothers me to think about men who talk to me, especially now who talked, who dated me in, in college or talked to me in, I'm in college. Now I'm like, don't tell people, you know, me <laughs> like, don't call me. Don't you ever tell people that you <laughs> ever spoke to me, let alone hung out with me, let alone Stupid. dated me. Don't ever tell people that. <laughs> if you do, I'm going to call you a fucking liar. <laughs> uh, uh He's lying. And I'm not talking about that fucking white guy that said he dated me in high school. You did date a white guy in high school. <laughs> Just kidding. These nuts. <laughs> yeah, look at me. You think that I would date a white guy in high school? Come on. Come on. Be serious, guys. Unless it was Nick Jonas. No way. And even then. And even then, I Come on. even then that's me being committed to a bit. Like I just I can't <laughs> I can't deliver on that. You a know lot what of I mean? people asked or had tagged us in the video that Bernie posted meeting Joe Jonas. Oh yeah. And they were like, What are your thoughts on this? My thoughts are I wish nothing but the best for Britney, but I wish that was me instead of her. <laughs> my thoughts, no, my thoughts are like I I'm so, I literally messaged her and I said, Bitch, what the fuck are you doing there? Yeah. <laughs> because, we were like, so happy for Because that's insane. That yeah. That's insane. That's so fucking and a lot of our friends went I which know. is fucking cool so i'm like what do you mean what do we think i'm fucking happy for them i yeah. think that's sick and i think she's so real for being like where's your wife that's the real question <laughs> because that's how i would feel too yeah. i don't care about you sophie if you ever see this bitch i'm a big fan come on so. the pod come on the pod if you're real <laughs> um but yeah that's why i'm like like sometimes i think about that about men who like interacted with me in mm. a romantic way and i'm like <sighs> yuck <laughs> don't tell people anything don't tell people we knew each other or if you do just like don't lie because <laughs> anywho so those are my non-negotiables mine too yeah all right y'all that's gonna do it for this week's episode of two idiot girls i'm i'm sorry that we goof around too much in the beginning <laughs> I have to get my zoomies out. Yeah, I have to get those are my that's my enrichment time in the pod. Yeah, I have yeah. to be an idiot for at least half of it, and then the rest of it will be serious. You guys know we're silly geese. 
but we do really enjoy giving advice. We just, we, we fart around too much in the beginning. I'm sorry about that. And then imagine this, I get here, let's just say at nine, right? And then we're supposed to film at nine. We don't film till 10 because we <laughs> dick around with each other for over an hour making Like coffee. we have nothing to do. No, I know. And then I'm like, oh my God, what time is it? So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's literally, and then we get ready to film and then we dick around for another 30 minutes. Then we film. So, and then we film and then we dig around for another three. That's what I'm saying. It's just nonsense. I'm sorry about that. So if you do did really like this episode, I know a lot of people liked the last one. If you want us to do a part three, we try to get at least three in because we also have really long answers to everything. Yeah. So if you would like us to do a part three to this episode, we will. Yeah. And our goal will be like, let's try and do like five. And the yeah. next one, I'm telling you right now, there's 400 responses in here. There's no way we would be able to get through. It's all of really, them. really hard. I'm so but sorry. We'll do another one. We'll, we'll do, do another one. Yeah. So even if you didn't want us to, we're going to. So <laughs> um, we're sorry that it, we couldn't fit more in. Yeah, but we'll keep we'll keep doing yeah, it. We'll keep like doing we'll it. do another episode. I'm so sorry. We were yummy. Don't worry about that. But we love you. Um, if you liked listening to this episode, you can stream all part, all of our episodes everywhere you can find podcasts. And the video version, as always, is always on the YouTube channel. Yes. Other than that, we love you. And we'll see you next week with more advice. Bye. Bye. <laughs>